Fernando Alonso was Mercedes' plan B for 2025, but he was always Aston Martin's plan A, and now he's decided to repay that faith by halting his own push for a Red Bull seat and sticking with Aston Martin through 2025, 2026 and, in some capacity, well beyond. Given Alonso's status as one of F1's truly elite drivers, what he's decided to do will have significant consequences for the rest of the grid. Here are six important ways that Alonso's crucial decision will impact F1's 2025 driver market and the wider competitive landscape for him and Aston Martin. We were led to believe Alonso was very keen on a Red Bull switch for 2025 and indeed was pushing hard to make that happen. It's now clear Red Bull wasn't in a position to move, as Alonso's real value there would be as a short-term Max Verstappen replacement if he decided to leave, rather than as Sergio Perez's replacement alongside Verstappen, as that would risk pulling the team apart. Alonso himself felt there was zero chance of Verstappen walking away from Red Bull, but presumably felt the chance of replacing Perez was remotely possible. That Perez is now doing a much better and more consistent job for Red Bull and earning praise again from Helmut Marko and Christian Horner suggests Perez's position is stronger than it has been for some time. The fact Alonso has now given up the chase suggests Red Bull privately closed the door on him. It's not the first time that's happened and Christian Horner is known to be wary of Alonso's reputation, unfair or not, as a disruptor. That's a shame in many ways. Seeing an Alonso Verstappen lineup take on Ferrari's Lewis Hamilton Charles Leclerc combination in 2025 would surely have made for a box office spectacle. But clearly, Red Bull feels it doesn't really need Alonso, either as an insurance policy against Verstappen quitting the team or against any external threat emerging in the near term in the Constructors' Championship. That's still a risky position for Red Bull to adopt, because it's still possible it might need one or even two new drivers for 2025, and the best available alternative has now taken himself off the market. With Alonso out of the equation, now it's his fellow Spaniard Carlos Sainz who becomes the leading free agent. A multiple race winner, proven all-round frontrunner with several years experience at Ferrari, what's not to admire? There are three obvious options for Sainz with Aston Martin off the table and one left field choice. The best move would be to hold out for Red Bull in the hope Perez is dropped and neither Daniel Ricciardo nor Yuki Tsunoda are deemed suitable to partner Verstappen. Sainz has to be the number one pick for Red Bull if it decides, as Christian Horner suggested after the Australian Grand Prix, to take a dip outside its own pool. A straight swap with Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes also can't be completely ruled out at this stage. Mercedes would be the logical best bet for Sainz if a Red Bull seat isn't up for grabs, but as we said before, Alonso was always plan B for Mercedes and it doesn't currently look as though Sainz has done more than simply replace Alonso in Mercedes thinking. So why push to join a team that doesn't appear to really want to sign you? The safest choice for Sainz is Audi's soon-to-be works team Sauber. That would clearly be a backward step given Sauber is a midfield struggler that cannot do a proper pit stop at the moment, but the Audi angle offers huge potential and would likely come with a lucrative long-term contract. Audi really wants Sainz too and is understood to have made a firm offer already. The left field move is to take a punt on Williams, which Sainz is believed to have at least checked out, but this feels like a real last resort to stay on the grid rather than a credible next step after leaving Ferrari. Within days of Lewis Hamilton's Ferrari move being announced, the race's Mark Hughes learned that Mercedes had immediately decided a firm plan A and plan B for how to replace its departing champion. Alonso was plan B, which means plan A to promote its protege Kimi Antonelli straight from Formula 2 into Hamilton's old seat, aged just 18, is now the plan. Toto Wolff's reference at the Japanese Grand Prix a week ago to some of the really good guys being about to sign for some of the other teams now seems like a hint that Alonso was about to come off the table for Mercedes. But Wolff didn't seem too fussed about that, such is his faith in everything Mercedes has seen from Antonelli so far. Mercedes may not be ready to officially commit to Antonelli until his F2 rookie season and test program in older F1 machinery have progressed, but its willingness to let the likes of Alonso and potentially Sainz too sign up elsewhere suggests Mercedes is pretty confident where that evaluation process is going and doesn't feel the need to snap up a safer short-term bet. And when Alonso referenced talks with other teams being light and Aston Martin being the team that seemed most committed to him, it might well have been a reference to Mercedes only really viewing him as a temporary seat filler before Antonelli was ready. Alonso probably felt he could have proved to Mercedes once in its car that it needn't worry about hurrying Antonelli into F1 or seen off George Russell and ensure that he, Alonso, and not Russell would be the best bet for Antonelli's longer term teammate. 
But given the insinuation Alonso would just be a seat warmer for Oscar Piastri when Alpine was offering only a short-term contract in 2022, was key to Alonso abruptly leaving for Aston Martin in the first place, he likely won't have appreciated being viewed as only a plan B by Mercedes. So what does Mercedes do now if Antonelli doesn't live up to the hype over the rest of 2024? Potentially stick with him anyway because of a confidence he'll develop into F1's next big thing and because it doesn't need him to be a title contender or even a race winner in 2025. This isn't like throwing a teenage rookie into Mercedes in its dominant prime. Wolf admits Mercedes is now in a rebuilding phase and so Antonelli can afford for 2025 to be a learning season. And it says a lot about how far Mercedes has fallen recently that he can do that in its factory team rather than being farmed out to the likes of Williams. Alonso's decision is unlikely to bring much joy to free agents currently doing the F1 driver equivalent of scrolling through LinkedIn. A Mercedes-powered Aston Martin for 2025 is a sweet gig. A Honda-powered, effectively factory status Aston Martin for 2026 is arguably even better. But for all those ambitious members of F1's midfield, Alonso has removed Aston from their calculations. There is no real belief in F1 circles that Lance Stroll's Aston ride alongside him is losable for the Canadian, even if several outside contenders are realistic upgrades. Now those contenders' options have narrowed, Alex Albon will probably need to hope for a Red Bull second chance as his only viable short-term path towards the front. For Esteban Ocon, who exited Force India slash Racing Point so Lance could upgrade from Williams and Ocon's current Alpine teammate Pierre Gasly, the possibilities are narrower still. And then, of course, there's Yuki Tsunoda, who seems to be in the process of being re-evaluated in F1 as he increasingly gets the better of Daniel Ricciardo, but whose longer-term prospects within Red Bull's family still look murky at best. A Honda-powered Aston Martin was at least something to strive for. Maybe it still is, but where is he to spend the time before one becomes available? When Aston Martin swooped for Alonso to replace the retiring Sebastian Vettel for 2023, it meant the big money, big ambitions project retained a superstar lead driver. With Alonso in the team, Aston Martin reached new heights. He has spearheaded everything Aston wants to achieve and been very, very committed to the cause, on track and off it. Alonso seemed to get that this was a great last roll of the dice for him, a massive project to be a part of that was a no-lose situation. If it resulted in rapid success, he could extend his F1 career in a more competitive car. If it didn't, he could say he played his part in laying the foundations for Aston Martin to achieve more in the future. As time has passed, it has become clear that Alonso is providing more for Aston than the team is for him, purely in terms of their respective places in the pecking order. Basically, Alonso is more of a top driver than Aston is a top team. So there was a real risk, if Alonso walked away, that Aston could be left without a truly A-list driver to spearhead the project. With everything that's been lined up, the new factory, the new wind tunnel, the new recruits, the works Honda engine deal, Aston Martin's putting together all it needs in theory to become a bona fide F1 frontrunner, especially when the new rules kick in for 2026. It needs an elite driver to front all of that, and with Alonso's renewal, that's exactly what Aston is getting. The Alonso Honda reunion is a fascinating subplot given how acrimonious things got during the ill-fated McLaren Honda years that Alonso was a central part of. Alonso's properly excited by it though, calling Honda a very important part of his decision to renew on a multi-year basis. He can see the role Honda's played in Red Bull dominating the past few seasons of F1 and ultimately there probably is no better team for Alonso to be in if Red Bull won't take him. Aston Martin describes Alonso's new contract as a multi-year deal, and it not only covers him driving for the next two seasons, but will also keep him at the team once he's hung up his helmet. Alonso calls this a lifetime project, describing it as the longest contract he has ever signed in F1. Considering Alonso has had some pretty lengthy deals in his career, including a five-year deal in his Ferrari days, that means this new contract presumably stretches to 2030 and beyond. The race asked Alonso directly how long the full length of this deal is, because it's worth a try, but Alonso inevitably declined to be drawn on the specifics. Exactly how long? Who knows? There's no guarantee Alonso won't continue racing beyond the end of 2026, even though he will be 45 years old by then. The bottom line is that he doesn't know. But he's already working hard to make it clear how dedicated he is to Aston Martin, not just in F1, but beyond that in its other racing projects and road car endeavours. He spoke of his desire to support the team to achieve great things, even once he's no longer driving. Inevitably, that raises the tantalising prospect that Alonso could get involved with the Aston Martin World Endurance Championship programme and the Valkyrie hypercar it will enter full-time in 2025. Alonso says there are no plans for him to get involved there as a driver, but he also didn't rule it out. 
And he is a two-time Le Mans 24 Hours winner with Toyota, meaning this could be an area where his experience can bring extra value to Aston Martin. Sadly, it's likely to be impractical for Alonso to contest the French Endurance Classic alongside F1, given the intensity of his F1 programme. But you never know. What's clear is that Alonso is all in with Aston Martin. Even he cannot defy the sands of time forever, and it seems likely this will be his last F1 team. But he intends to be there for years to come, in some capacity or other. Whether he'll still be driving in 2027 and beyond remains to be seen, but it can't be counted out.